Hey everyone, I'm Rob and welcome to the test drive. Today, I'm driving the 2018 Nissan Murano. So the Murano is a mid-size crossover SUV and in the Nissan lineup it sits in between the smaller Rogue and the larger Pathfinder and I've always liked the Murano. I've kind of always thought of it as a slightly larger V6 Rogue and that kind of does describe the Murano pretty well. Now there are several different trims available for the 2018 Murano. It starts with the base model S and it moves up to the top of the line Platinum. The one that I'm driving today is the S. V trim level which is just above the S so it's essentially very close to the base model but has some additional features but once you get into the SL then it starts to become more of a luxury type of SUV you get leather and, and additional features and it's not very expensive to go from the SV to the SL it's really a, about a four thousand dollar difference but even the SV trim does give you a lot for the price so we're gonna start with the exterior of the 2018 Murano. Now the current generation has been around since the 2015 model year and this is the third generation of the Nissan Murano. I really like the look of the Murano from the front. It is so much more aggressive than it ever was in previous generations. I really like the look of the headlights and just the way it's angled and just the look really is very mean and aggressive and sporty. It also has a very nice side profile. I feel like SUVs in this category aren't necessarily designed to be the most sporty looking or the most aggressive looking or the most fun vehicles to drive, but I have to say that this Murano definitely looks the part. I mean, it certainly looks functional and looks like it gives you a decent amount of room and looks like a nice family vehicle, but at the same time, looks aggressive. I like the look from the side. This one has some good looking 18 inch rims, but you can upgrade to 19s and 20s and the higher level trims. And then the rear looks very good as well. I really like the look of the tail lights. I also like the fact that you get dual exhaust tips in this SV trim. I think that really looks good and just makes it look more aggressive. Now getting to the interior of the 2018 Murano, the first thing I realized when I got in here is that this SUV has a lot of room. I mean the driver and front passenger have plenty of room. There's plenty of space in between the two. You do have a really large center console I feel like for this category of vehicle and then the back seat is really big as well I'm six feet tall and I had no problem sitting behind myself I had so much more leg room than I thought I would and then the trunk is a pretty decent size as well I was actually able to fit my golf clubs with all of the clubs in the bag fully across horizontally in the trunk. So overall, I am impressed with the amount of room that you have in here. Now, again, because this is the SV trim, you don't get leather, you do get that in the SL and up. However, even the charcoal black cloth seats that are in the Murano that I'm driving are pretty nice. They feel relatively soft, definitely softer than a lot of other cloth seats. Now you have a decent looking steering wheel. It's certainly not my favorite. Nissan does make some very nice steering wheels, certainly in the Maxima and even in the Rogue that I drove with the flat bottom. I really liked that and I would have loved to see that in the Murano, but at the end of the day, the steering wheel is fine. The SV does give you leather wrapping around the steering wheel and it's somewhat soft, but I mean, it feels good though. You do have soft touch surfaces all over the vehicle, so the look and the feel of the interior of this Murano certainly doesn't feel cheap. It feels like a higher end potentially interior for this class. And I like where everything is. I love the fact that the start stop button is actually next to the gear lever. It's just kind of a more sporty location. You can also get a panoramic moonroof as an option in the Murano. The one that I'm driving doesn't have it. And again, I drove this 
on a long trip this week and it really was a comfortable SUV to drive. Now getting to the performance of the 2018 Nissan Murano, there's only one engine option available and that is a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6. And that's why I've kind of always thought of this as a slightly larger V6 Rogue because the Rogue is only available with a four cylinder and only ever has been available with a four cylinder. So I like that this has a naturally aspirated V6. I like that better and it's just my personal opinion, but I feel like I like that better typically than a turbocharged four cylinder even though there's a lot of turbo fours out there that are really nice. Now, Nissan uses a 3.5 liter V6 across many vehicles, but in the Murano here, it puts out 260 horsepower and 240 pound-feet of torque. The Murano is available in either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, and the all-wheel drive system, as you might imagine, is front-wheel drive biased. But that said, you don't really get much torque steer in this SUV, and you know I really like the way that the all-wheel drive system distributes power. It really kind of hides the fact to an, to an extent that this is a front-wheel drive biased all-wheel drive system. Now, as is the case in many Nissan vehicles, this Murano has a CVT or continuously variable transmission that's essentially a gearless gearbox. So you'll notice it kind of simulates shifts a little bit, but you do get that drone when you are in the higher RPMs when you're trying to accelerate from a dead stop. But it's not bad, and actually when you put this in manual mode, it simulates the shifts somewhat quickly, actually. At the end of the day, a CVT is somewhat unnatural, in my opinion, and certainly not my favorite type of transmission in the world. But I feel like Nissan has done a pretty decent job with it in this Murano. And I feel like it also helps this Murano get some pretty good fuel economy. I mean, this is rated at 21 miles per gallon in the city and 28 on the highway. And I had no problem achieving that 28 miles per gallon. And I drove this thing pretty aggressively. I mean, relatively speaking for the highway, driving around 80 miles an hour and still being able to get the rated, the EPA rated fuel economy on the highway. So I really like that. I feel like if you really took it easy, you could probably even get closer to 30. And this does have a very soft ride. It is very comfortable. It absorbs bumps pretty well. You don't get very much rattling over bumps and potholes and things like that. I mean, I really feel like the ride quality is good in the Murano. And I also feel like the Murano corners pretty well considering the size of the vehicle, it really does handle decently. <laughs> All right. It doesn't, it doesn't do that well at high speed. Yeah, high speed around traffic circles, uh, really not the best for that, I guess. I have to say, I really like the sound of this V6 as well, and it does pull pretty hard. I mean, 260 horsepower and 240 pound-feet of torque really isn't a lot for a naturally aspirated V6. It's not a lot for a Nissan 3.5 liter V6. If you look at the Maxima or the Pathfinder or a lot of the other vehicles that this engine is in, it does put out significantly more power in other vehicles. But that said, the Murano is not slow. It really does get up very quickly. It pulls pretty hard considering the amount of power and it sounds good. I mean, other than a little bit of droning with the CVT, I really like the sound of this V6. Now getting to the technology in the 2018 Murano, I'm impressed with what comes standard in all of the Murano trim levels. You do get this large touch screen in all of the Murano vehicles, which I was very impressed with. And the Nissan Connect system is pretty nice. You do get navigation in every single Murano, which is very surprising because there are a lot of Infiniti vehicles that don't come standard with navigation, but the Murano does. And even when I drove the Armada, it was the same thing. I drove a base model Armada and it came standard with navigation. Now you also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard 
which is really nice as well. So, you know, you get some nice technology in the touch screen here. You also get a nice backup camera. The graphics are pretty good. And then in the SV trim, you also get blind spot monitoring, which is really nice to get in this Murano. Now the visibility is very good. You don't necessarily need it, but it's just nice that you can get it even without having to go to some of the higher end trim levels. I also like the screen in between the tachometer and the speedometer. The graphics are really nice and it does give you a lot of vehicle information. And then I really like the setup of the climate controls too. I love that you have the digital readouts below the infotainment screen. Now, unfortunately, this Murano has the same key that my sister's 2009 Nissan Rogue has, but it does have remote start and the proximity key functionality, which is nice. So I hope you enjoyed this review of the 2018 Nissan Murano. I'm Rob, this is the test drive. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment, let me know what you think about the video and this SUV and what this competes against. And please consider subscribing to my channel. It does help me make more videos and it makes you eligible for all the giveaways that we have going on. Right now we're giving away an Acaso EK7000 action camera. So I'm very excited about that. Um, see the description below for more info on that. Uh, but again, becoming a subscriber does give you a lot of benefits and you do support the channel. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for taking this test drive with me and I'll talk to you soon.